I think that we can all agree that Barbie is one of the biggest IPs out there with a multi-billion dollar toy and merchandise empire and countless movies and games. Ever since her debut in 1959, she's quite literally become a household name, beloved by millions of people across the globe. With all that fame, popularity, and most importantly, piles of cash, you'd think that a Barbie virtual world game would be a hit, a global phenomenon up there with World of Warcraft and RuneScape in terms of sheer legacy. Okay, well maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but you'd think that it would at least be pretty popular. Instead, the game has all but faded into obscurity, with very few people even having knowledge of its existence, let alone discussing its many quirks and, well, flaws. So today, I thought we'd take a look back at Barbie's forgotten and fraught virtual world, barbiegirls.com. Before we jump into things, I just want to give a huge thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Casetify makes fun, fashionable, and super durable phone cases. And their iconic Impact cases just got a huge new feature upgrade. Introducing... Impact Ring Stand Cases The Impact Ring Stand includes a pull-out camera ring stand that gives your phone extra protection and functions as a kickstand so you can prop your phone up hands-free. It has the same epic features as the original Impact Cases, from 6.6 foot drop protection, prints and customization, to being MagSafe compatible and made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials. The Impact Ring Stand can be used in so many ways, and I've had such a fun time finding out new and convenient ways to use it in my day-to-day -day life. I literally can't do any basic household chores without watching YouTube in the background, so the Impact Ring Stand makes it super easy to watch YouTube while moving around the kitchen or lounge. And it's also great for video calls and FaceTime so you can play games, do your makeup, cook, or whatever else you want to do while talking with your friends and family. It's also great for taking hands-free photos, selfies, or videos so you can focus on getting the perfect shot instead of awkwardly propping your phone up. There are so many ways to use the Impact Ring Stand, so head to casedfy.com slash izzies for 10% off. A huge thank you to Casedfy for sponsoring this video and now let's jump back into the world of barbiegirls.com. So today we all know Barbie as the legendary toy, merchandise and film empire, but there was a time before then where the brand was trying and failing to find their footing in the new digital age. After her debut in 1959, Barbie skyrocketed to popularity, becoming one of the highest selling toys in the world and one of the most iconic. It seemed like a roller coaster that could only go up, but sales actually began to decline in 1997, a downward trend that would continue for the next decade and one which the LA Times chalked up to quote the shifting tastes of young girls. Which is a polite way of saying that Barbie was becoming lame and old school. Or L and not goated with the sauce as the kids say. There's no way that's making it to the final video. In the 2000s, there was a big boom in the technological space and all of the hottest brands were going digital, particularly brands aimed at kids. Kids have a lot of spare time to endlessly browse the net and they have a bountiful supply of their parents' hard-earned cash to spend, so they're sort of the perfect audience to virtually market to. So not only were book series, movies, and indeed toy lines setting up their own websites and forums, but virtual worlds and games were becoming increasingly popular among computer-savvy tweens. Barbie.com was launched in 1996, at that time just a simple web page that displayed various Barbies that could be collected, as well as the history of the doll and frequently asked questions. And since this was the 90s, it also had a guest book for visitors to add to, as was the style at the time. By the early 2000s, the site began to more actively appeal to a younger demographic, with bright poppy colours, tons of hashtag cool and hip slang, and most importantly, simple interactive pages and rudimentary games. Quizzes, printable colouring pages, those sorts of things. In the following years, the site would transition away from these more simple activities and towards absolutely banging flash games. Seriously, if you didn't play the dress up and makeover games on barbie.com and especially mycene.com, you didn't live. Dress up, makeover, nail painting, it truly had it all. It was the far superior version of Girls Go Games and I know that's going to be controversial but come on, quality over quantity. The quality control on Girls Go Games was far from perfect. Barbie games, on the other hand, were the cream of the crop, at least to discerning 10-year-old flash game enjoyers like myself. Though Barbie.com and its associated sister sites were popular hubs for kids and tweens to play all the fashion flash games their little hearts desired, it wasn't really the send-off into the digital age that Barbie needed. Sales were still declining as kids had turned to online games in virtual worlds like Neopets, Club Penguin, and Toontown. Games that were new and exciting, and most importantly, multiplayer online experiences that kind of made physical toys pale in comparison. The MMO and virtual world scene were absolutely booming and it was clear that if Barbie was to survive into the new digital age, she would have to adapt. 
BarbieGirls.com was launched in a beta state on April 24th of 2007. After only two months, the virtual world already had a whopping 3 million users and a year on the site had amassed over 14 million. Mattel claimed that it was the fastest growing virtual world in history, though every time I've seen that pop up in an article, there's been no actual source to verify it and I haven't been able to find anything verifying it online, so whether that's true or just Mattel hyping themselves up is anyone's guess. Either way, those are staggering numbers for a beta game and it's clear from the numbers alone that BarbieGirls.com was an absolute hit. The site allowed players to create their own Barbie girl and enter a stylish and very pink virtual world with millions of other players. While the map was originally pretty small and bare bones, it was eventually fleshed out with some of the goofiest location names you've ever heard. Shopper Morlix, Poor Palooza, Total Girlhood and Extreme Dream Park were the four major areas on the map, each of which included locations such as Tail Shaken Treehouse, B Central, Purple Parlor, Sparkle Coaster Place, Twilight Woods, and the Rock and Rec Center, just to name a few. To give this game a little bit of credit, I do appreciate the absolutely goofy names that they came up with for all of the locations. It should have got Game of the Year for Total Girlhood alone. You could play mini games and participate in activities, but the main draw, as with many other kids' virtual worlds, was buying stuff because capitalism is awesome. From buying clothes, hairstyles, and accessories for your Barbie, to buying and playing with pets, to furnishing your very own apartment with Fernie. Yes, that's what it was called in the game. The game had this really cool sort of edgy and angular art style for the characters. It was very 2000s in the best possible way. I mean, just look at this Barbie who was the main mascot slash guide for the game. She has pink Avril Lavigne streaks and wears low-waisted jeans and baby tees. She's 2000s Barbie. It's like the best thing. And while the customization options for these Y2K Barbies were endless, the quality of the items was pretty varied, presumably because they had lots of different artists working on different items. Some were very on model and perfectly blended in with the rest of the game and some were a little bit more dubious, making the characters look a bit off. This is definitely a super common issue that a ton of other virtual worlds face. I talked about this exact issue in my video on Bimbo Land, but I feel like it's more notable here considering the size of the IP and also the emphasis on fashion that this game had. For a Barbie based dress up game, personally I feel like a little more attention could have been paid to the, you know, the dress up. If nothing else, it's an absolute relic of the mid 2000s low-waisted jeans, kitten heels, the shirt that says Team Skater Boys, it's honestly perfect. One other issue that arose with customization was the egregious paywalling, but we'll get to that a little bit later. You could also customize your own living space with furniture, aka Fernie, and honestly, they kinda killed it. The furniture all looks incredible, and from a few development sketches and artworks that we have access to, it's clear that a ton of time and effort went into designing all of this. Generally, in these kids' MMOs, home customization is valued a lot less than character character customization since most players are mainly there for the dress up but they still put a lot of emphasis on the decorating and home customization aspect with all these intricate items and furnitures that players could buy and it's super cool. Aside from shopping, dressing up, chatting with other players and watching animated Barbie movie trailers to earn in-game currency and yes that was definitely the coolest way to earn money in the game, there were a variety of mini games to play at the arcade. When the site first launched in beta all of the games were taken from Mattel's pre-existing website so there were lots of Barbie Mycene and Pixel Chicks games. At this early stage, most of the focus was on fleshing out the world and the customization aspect, so many games were kind of left to the wayside. However, as the site grew in popularity, these pre existing games were replaced with completely original BarbieGirls.com games such as Design Idol, Dazzling Designs, Tiara Trivia, Puzzle Scram, and Lady Buggin, just to name a few. You could also adopt pets from a pet store in Poor Palooza, which you could then display in your room with the option to feed and play with the pets as well. The pets didn't really do much besides sit in your room and perform a few interactable animations, but it was a nice little touch. You know, kids like adopting cute animals and you had to be a VIP to adopt them, so I'm sure if nothing else Mattel made bank off of it. And at the end of the day, isn't that the most important thing? There were your standard options like puppies and kittens, but with the purchase of a Barbie Girls MP3 accessory pack, you could get exclusive pets. In 2007, the exclusive pets were a panda, penguin, and turtle, and in 2008 they were a koala, elephant, and giraffe. So, we should probably talk about Barbie Girl's weird MP3 tie-in. Girl is my online key to unlock Club Beauty and to adopt a pet. Only Barbie Girl unlocks more of the me I wanna be. Design my room online. Jukebox. Cute puppy. Aquarium. Pink Panda. Only Barbie Girl unlocks. Best friends chat. Add your 
real MP3 player. Bobby Girl device each sold separately works with PC and Windows XP or above. Adult setup required. Ask parents permission before going on. Now one thing that you have to know about kids' virtual worlds in the 2000s is that they absolutely loved a physical toy and game tie-in gimmick. For example, Club Penguin released physical Puffle plush toys which had codes on them that you could use in-game for items, the Lilith's Pet Shop online had plush pets that you could bring into the digital world using a code, and of course there was Webkins whose whole premise was being a toy slash digital world crossover. Barbie Girls took this concept and put a unique spin on it. Rather than producing plushies or Barbie dolls with digital codes, on them, they released a line of customizable Barbie Girls MP3 players. Again, this was 2007, MP3 players were the hip new thing, uh, don't judge. The MP3 players were actually super cool, they were designed to look like avatars from barbiegirls.com and you could even buy accessory packs so you could mix and match their hair and outfits. I've never seen this type of customization for something like an MP3 player before and not only could you dress it up like a doll and download and listen to music on it, but each device included a disc that you could register on Barbie Girls girls.com to get a VIP membership. I never had one of these dull mp3 players so I can't vouch for the quality but according to some reviews that came out at the time the sound quality was significantly lower on these than standard mp3s. There's also this amazingly late 2000s snippet that I just have to share with you guys. My six year old daughter loved the Barbie girl mp3. Despite the fact that she already owned a pink iPod shuffle she found it easy to use and loved that she could adjust the clothing and accessories. Battery life rated at 10 hours between charges didn't seem to be an issue as she listened to the high school musical soundtrack over and over again without a recharge. So all seemed well in Barbie land, millions of players, a strong and steady stream of revenue, frequent site updates and new features, and even an mp3 doll tie-in. What more could you ask for? But it wasn't all cookies and cream on barbiegirls.com, so let's discuss some of the more glaring issues and how they likely contributed to the site's eventual closure. So let's cut straight to the chase here. Kids virtual worlds are designed to make money off of young, impressionable kids. That's not a conspiracy, it's not an accusation, it's not a call out, it's just a fact. We've discussed it time and time again on this channel, it's the one thing that unites basically all MMOs and virtual worlds, but especially those targeted towards children. BarbieGirls.com was no exception. It specifically advertised to and targeted kids and paywalled a huge amount of content from 90% of the outfits and furniture, to pets, to specific VIP areas, to even the ability to freely speak. It was a goddamn human rights issue. Okay, not really, but regular plays were limited to B chat, which consisted of a limited list of sentences and phrases and super B chat, where players could type but were restricted heavily as to what they could say. VIP players, on the other hand, had access to secret B chat, which allowed them to type whatever they wanted without any constraints. Within reason, obviously, they still couldn't swear or say anything crude, but it was a far less constrictive form of online communication. This is pretty standard virtual world fair, paying members get access to exclusive items and features, and non-paying members get called poor losers. It's just the way that these ecosystems work. But what makes barbiegirls.com stand out as especially predatory in this field is the specific way that VIP worked. So when the site first launched, the only way to get a VIP membership was with one of the physical Barbie Girls MP3 players and the associated accessory packs. At this point, membership effectively lasted forever as there was no real set end date, but this all changed when monthly subscriptions were added, allowing players to simply buy a membership online rather than buy the physical MP3 players. There was a one month membership for $5.99, three months for $17.99, and six months for $35.99, and these were recurring payments. Once this monthly subscription model was added, the original VIP players were then given an end date for their VIP status, which they could then renew online if they wanted to. Again, this all seems super normal for a kid's virtual world until you realize that once you started paying for VIP, you literally had to keep paying or they would delete your account. <laughs> Non-VIPs could become VIPs through buying memberships or physical items, but VIP accounts could not revert back to being non-VIPs. They could only be renewed by paying money, or they would be permanently deleted, forcing players to start all over again with a basic account. This was a blatantly predatory and quite honestly scammy move that effectively trapped players into paying forever. The fact that buying VIP was an irreversible decision that you had to pay for forever or risk account deletion was obviously never openly advertised, and I can't 
imagine the amount of kids, or rather kids and their parents who are paying for it, who paid way more money than they wanted to because they didn't want to lose all of their hard-earned progress, all of their items and money, and all of their friends. It's by far the scammiest tactic I've ever seen a kid's virtual world use, which is saying a lot since this particular genre tends to be filled with questionable and shady practices. In April of 2011, players received an email from barbiegirls.com, quote, Dear parent, thanks for helping us create the coolest online community for girls. We're sure your daughter has enjoyed all of the fun, fashion, and friendship. We're sad to say goodbye, but the Barbie Girls World will be closing at 11.59pm Eastern Time on June the 1st, 2011. Four years after its launch, barbiegirls.com closed its pink glittery doors and refunded VIP memberships to all paying players. The official reason given by Mattel for the closure was, quote, barbiegirls.com is closing as the Barbie brand is exploring new opportunities where girls can experience the best of Barbie. We are committed to providing girls with the best play experience both on and offline. Interestingly, after the shutdown, the homepage of barbiegirls.com prompted users to instead go and join Stardoll, one of the earliest and largest online dress-up and fashion communities on the internet. They even collaborated with the site to add some exclusive Barbie Girls themed items. Though hordes of 8 year olds were understandably upset about the sudden closure as evidenced by the many outraged Weebly blog posts by Barbie Girls fan pages, the cries of outrage and petitions did nothing to sway Mattel and barbiegirls.com has since faded from memory. Despite barbiegirls.com being well over a decade old at this point and pretty much lost to time, this isn't the final chapter in its long and fraught story. In August of 2021, a non-profit revival project called Barbie Girls Rewritten was launched with the goal of reviving the long-dead game and making it free to play for all of those nostalgic ex-Barbies who used to play the game. The project is still pretty active, posting regular newsletters and social media posts updating followers on their progress. Although for some reason their YouTube channel hasn't been updated in 10 months, which is Odd. The progress that they've shown so far is pretty cool though. Rudimentary walking mechanics, a pretty fleshed out dress up and customization system, and all of the UI and menus from the original game, not to mention replicas of the iconic soundtrack. While this may not seem like a lot, keep in mind that these non-profit revival slash private server projects are usually the work of a small team of unpaid volunteers working in their spare time, so all things considered, I think progress is pretty good. If nothing else, the Barbie Girls rewritten team have fostered a really fun and welcoming community for a bunch of super cool people. The social media posts are really fun and the art assets are really really impressive. They host movie nights where they watch animated Barbie and Bratz movies and their discord seems like a really nice place to hang out and chat with fellow Barbie enthusiasts. It's honestly really cool and I hope that as the revival project grows the community grows as well and maintains its very lovely atmosphere. However as of right now Barbie Girls Rewritten is not a playable game and there are no plans to release it anytime soon so Barbie Girls fans will have to continue to wait this one out. I for one really hope that the project works out because I have a lot of nostalgia for this kind of vaguely shitty Barbies MMO from the 2000s. I played basically all of the Barbie games including this one and while this was definitely one of the worst ones, I was a fiend for Virtual World so I played the shit out of it and personally I'd really really love to play it again. It's kind of up in the air whether anything will actually materialize because you know, rewritten projects tend to be a little bit eh, but Let's hope so. But I want to hear if you guys played the game. As I said personally, I played the absolute hell out of it as a kid and uh, I'm very curious to hear your experiences. Did you pay way too much for VIP? What pets did you have? Did you have the MP3 players? Because uh, I didn't. I don't even know if they sold them in New Zealand. I can't remember them ever being on sale or wanting one. Um, but if you did, I'm super curious to hear uh, what that experience was like, because honestly, it's one of the more interesting uh, virtual world kind of tie-in gimmicks that I've seen, uh, and I'm curious to hear. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please definitely let me know. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! A huge thank you to my Garfield overlords over on Patreon. Fitzy, Mr. Waffle in Love, Thy Heavenly, Doug, Astrium Vortex, Blue Mayfeld, Brian Downey, Charlie B, Chicory, Dana Homegardner, Dozo Blint, Grip Gunderson, Helm Hamburger Hand, Hazy, Jesse Chisholm, Katrina Likes 5e e Stuff, Leanne O, Lee XX, Michelle Olsen, Oliver Brains, Sheriff Whiskey, Simon, Sophie H, Xavier Araho, A Riddle Wrapped in Enigma Hidden by a Question Mark, Joe Bradshaw, Matt LRJ, and SHSL Sunson. 
thank you guys so much for this thank you guys so so much for the support it means the world to me if you want to join these guys over on patreon the link will be in the description and yeah thank you so so much um i really appreciate it and i really hope to see you in the next one bye